two three zone offense. Uh, blah, black play defense. I'll stand there. I can stand there because you just played the offense. I'd be the last defender. Yeah, okay. You can go. Red ball. I need both 45s. Yep. So this is a 2 3. This is a 2 3. Okay. Normally, like with, when you have good shooters, you want to tell them to split the difference between this guy and the bottom guy. Because what will happen in the 2 3 is as that pass goes, Okay, if he splits the difference between the two, now these two have to talk. Does he close out or does he close out? All right, in a perfect 2-3 world, normally he would guard, start to guard the ball, Krebs had the ball, boom, and on the pass, Matt, or Coach Matt would have to help for a second, now Starks would have to pull over, and then he'd be able to back up. That's kind of a perfect 2-3 rule. So if you split the difference, now you get them thinking, do I help, do I not help, do I show, do I not show? That's called a bump and recover. All right, he's got to bump me off. Do that again, because that's what they'll teach you on defensively and what you want. Go. Pass the ball there. Pass the ball there. So I'm here. He's going. Pass the ball there. I'd say, let's go, Justin. Give me Justin. Give me Justin. Bump. And then I'm here. It's bump and recover, right? Put me in a bump and recover situation is what we're saying, because they're not going to be able to do it, all right? Let's go again from there. Tom, yep, now Tom can face up, now Tom can go here, take a shot, take a dribble, and now we got Tom going there. Absolutely. If we can get the ball to the middle, then that's glorious. That's what we want in offense. Now, if good defense team, here, you would want to take this away. Absolutely. Now, from here, it's the other ball. Another really important thing against zone defense is you want to use the short point. So, with uh, Max, who's going to be here on the block, you just want to take two or three steps out here, okay? And if you can ever get the ball to the short corner against the zone, you want to do it, okay? So if he passes here to the short corner, and here comes Coach Matt to help. From here, once the ball goes to the short corner, Tom needs to dive to the rim. Yep. And so now, look at Liam Kim. Liam Kim has to decide, does he want to help here? Does he want to stay on, um, on Brian Jett? Or if he bumps off, stays on Brian Jett. Now here comes Trent Warren. Now Max can square up, and then he can look for a skip back. Boom. All right, so you always want to try and get the ball to the short corner. Okay, if that's not open, everything's fine. They reverse the ball, get it back out. Boom, get it back out. Good, to the top. Now Tom wants to go back to the spot. Good, reverse the ball. Absolutely, not in here. See, so Silva's not open, so he took the difference. Now we're fine there. Okay, if you can catch and shoot, I right? catch and shoot. Okay, Tom will want to come out to the short corner. Yup, Max is already at the high post. We can go to the short corner, do it. Here comes Max's cut to the rim. Boom, he's not open. Whatever, skip it out. Good, reverse the ball. Good, opposite guy always comes up to the high post. Now you decide from there. Right, it's always a numbers game. You want to occupy or overload a side with three people. All right, does that make sense? Does anyone have any questions on that? Normally you get the ball at the high post or the short corner. I, when we did it, we would say, you know, we want to get to the short corner multiple times. Because it's just so hard to guard the short corner and then skipping the ball out and getting the zone moving. Once the zone's moving, then offense is at the advantage. That's really what you want. You want to see a different breakdown of any zone for um, the offensive standpoint? Gotcha. Defense getting a 1-3-1. One, one. Um, you want to, yeah, you can go for it, sure. Sorry, we like to take turns on doing this stuff. The whole thing, coaches, to think about is attack even front with odds, attack odd front with evens. So kind of basic, generic kind of zone principle, right? So we got a 1-3-1, one, one, 
So we want to attack it with evens, meaning we want two, right? We had a two, three, we attacked it with odds, right? We had three, okay? Just kind of basic zone kind of stuff. I'm defense. So like he said, we want to attack with the even front because it's an odd man front. So now, if he's crushing the ball here, that's fine. You can't throw the ball on top. You gotta do the pass angle. You gotta do the pass as well. Now from here, a good one, three, one, okay? Offense should always see diagonal passing. So right now, Max is in the corner, but you almost want to think, okay, from here, if Coach Matt doesn't dive in to guard the block, then Max should just be coming to the rim, and we should always try and look diagonals. Like that. Absolutely. Stop. Trent, that doesn't make sense. I'll take the ball here. So a good one for one. You'd have the ball starts with one coming. Pressure the ball. The guy in the bottom would always take strong side corner. So Trent, you're not standing if you're on the strong side corner every single time. Okay, so he guards strong side corner. Now Coach Matt has to decide. Does he take away the basket for a layup or does he take away that skip to silver? Okay, now let's say a good one through one defense, he would definitely you know, not give up a layup. Okay, perfect. So then Tom takes one dribble, whatever, improves the passing angle. Boom, now we got his side. Now Max is going to go all the way out. Yup, and now Kirk is going to use the diagonal passing, all right, to be able to make this sort of layup. Now Tom sets the side. Do I give up a layup or do I give up a skip? Obviously, you want to give up a skip. So right now, Coach Matt, we're going to take the ball. Trent Warren always guards the ball side corner. Boom, from there. So the big thing with 1-3-1 one, one is you always want to look diagonal. Pass fakes, and diagonal passing is the most important thing to 1-3-1. Cool, there. With a zone, how, how fast do we move the ball? How fast do we hold on to the ball? Do you hold on to the ball? No, one second, you got So that's going to kill your zone. Okay, offensively, if your players hold the ball and try to read, try to read, try to read, you're, you're done. All right, you're going to have to tell them, look, get the ball out your hands. So you have to really show them where to go and how to move. Get the ball out your hands, get your ball out your hands, get the ball out your hands. All right, you want to kill it on a pass, but there is a philosophy in basketball that you got to drive a gap and make one guard two. Right, just same thing if we were doing a diamond press. I want my point guard to occupy two people and then release, and then we're good on the opposite side, right, because we have a numbers advantage again. Okay, so eventually you can't just always pass it around the horn. You should pass it to the point that you put people in closeout situations. Somebody can get a, hit a gap. Somebody can move without the ball. But now we're back to moving without the ball principles. Okay, so it can't just be passing all around. At some point, somebody, you should have been moving the ball quick enough where I'm running out on him. He can just hit a gap. Now we're in a drive and kick situation. We got a shot right there. Okay, yes. No, absolutely not. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, what I would say is normally with fourth graders, you obviously wouldn't want to be this wide. Like when I was even in high school, we were starting it from about here. Okay. And if they want to pressure, you know, super high, that's fine. When a kid wants to pressure, he's got to be all the way out here. Obviously, you're not going to make the diagonal pass from here. But what's going to happen is he's going to reverse the ball to there. And then now here, he's closer to the basket to be able to make this diagonal pass. Okay, and so now, like Coach Matt said, you really want to have two guys like I want. So right now, we're in a good scenario because two guys are trying to guard one. You should be out there. That could be guarding him. Yep. And then now from here, you want to just throw it the easiest next pass. Stop. And now you've got to find your closeout situation. So now I'm in a closeout, right? So now drive the ball. And now we're forcing Trent to have to go guard all the way over there and help him go. Okay? So at that age level, yeah, it's going to be a lot of passing quick, and then somebody's going to have to be able to take one, two dribbles in, okay, and then just make the right pass. That would be a better situation at that age level.